Hey, it's Metacosis Perfect Nellis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist, and today we'll compare between aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone comes from the hypothalamus in your brain, but aldosterone comes from the cortex of your adrenal medulla, which sits on top of the kidney. Antidiuretic hormone reabsorbs water only, but aldosterone reabsorbs salt and water. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. I also have another playlist called comparisons because a good doctor is the one who understands distinctions such as the distinction between obligated water and free water. Obligated water is water that follow electrolytes blindly. For example, water is attracted to salt. If I'm not reabsorbing the salt, I am not reabsorbing this water because this water is obligated to follow the sodium. Versus free or facultative water. This is free. It does not need any electrolytes to follow. Name the hormone responsible for reabsorbing obligated water and the answer is aldosterone. It reabsorbs salt and water. But name the hormone that's responsible for reabsorbing free pure water, this is antidiuretic hormone by acting on the V2 channel in the kidney. Free to live, free to choose V2 receptor. Let's start by antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin, also known as desmopressin or DDAVP. Who secretes ADH, the hypothalamus in your brain, and then the hypothalamus will give it to the posterior pituitary. ADH is released from the hypothalamus and then goes to the posterior pituitary and then goes to the bloodstream because it's a hormone, endocrine land. And then what's the target organ? The kidney. Be specific, the collecting ducts and collecting tubules of the kidney. Why? To reabsorb pure water. Do you remember this? This is the relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. When it comes to antidiuretic hormone, it's made by the hypothalamus, and then it's gonna go to the hypothalamo, hypophyseal neural tract. And then before you know it, the antidiuretic hormone is stored in the posterior pituitary, and then it's gonna be released into the bloodstream until it reaches the kidney. Here's the lovely hypothalamus, particularly the supraoptic nucleus, which releases ADH. ADH will leave, goes to the posterior pituitary as you see here, and then it will leave and go to the bloodstream where it has some receptors. The most famous one is the one in the kidney, which is V2. V stands for vasopressin. But there is also V1 and there is V3. When ADH acts on V1 receptor, it causes vasoconstriction by contracting smooth muscles in blood vessels, which will raise your blood pressure. When ADH acts on V2, it will reabsorb pure water from the kidney, which will also raise your blood pressure. Ergo, ADH has one purpose in life, to raise your blood pressure. So suppose that I was distracted crossing the road and I got hit by a car. I lost blood. My blood pressure is dropping. What's the response? increase ADH release because it has one purpose in life to raise my blood pressure. Oh, by the way, the reason it came from the hypothalamus and not from the posterior pituitary is that the hypothalamus is part of the limbic system, which means it's related to memory. And you should remember this so that you do not repeat your mistake twice. What's the only purpose of antidiuretic hormone? To raise your blood pressure and it achieves this by three receptors v1 v2 and guess what v3 where is v1 v1 is in blood vessels when adh stimulates v1 receptor the vessel will constrict decreasing your radius increasing the total peripheral resistance and raising your blood pressure when adh acts on the v2 receptor it will open v2 aquaporin channels in the collecting tubules of the kidney which will help reabsorb pure water, which will also raise your blood pressure. How does ADH act upon the kidney? Well, by talking to the kidney. How did ADH reach the kidney? By dilating the afferent arterial that goes to the kidney. And this is the function of V3 receptor. Moreover, ADH can stimulate corticotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, which increases the release of ACTH from the anterior pituitary more cortisol, 
more salt and water retention eventually raises your blood pressure. The most important fact about ADH is this. ADH is gonna act upon V2 receptor in the kidney to open aquaporin 2 water channel leading to reabsorption of water from the nephron or from the tubule to the bloodstream. More water coming into my blood, this will raise my blood volume and raise my blood pressure as well. Is this obligated water or free water? This is free water. What if I lack antidiuretic hormone? Then you'll have a disease known as diabetes insipidus. Diabetes means urine, insipidus means insipid, taste less. This is colorless urine, very dilute. Why? Because I did not reabsorb any of the free water. All of the free water ended up in the urine. The urine is super diluted colorless, tasteless, with very low specific gravity. Now contrast that with diabetes mellitus, which is lack of insulin, or insulin is there but not working, where your urine is super duper sweet, too much glucose. The color is different, the taste is different. Because before these sophisticated lab techniques that we have today, doctors used to actually taste the urine to make the diagnosis. I kid you not and hence the name. Hey medicosis, uh, can I diagnose diabetes insipidus before even taking a patient's history? Yes, you can reach a provisional diagnosis based on the fact that patients with diabetes insipidus are always carrying the biggest bottles of water that you will ever see in your life. And they are always asking for more water, especially iced. Water. We are done with the antidiuretic hormone. Please take a deep breath and let's talk about aldosterone now, which comes from the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex. It is a mineralocorticoids because it reabsorbs minerals, i.e. sodium and water. How does aldosterone get released from the zona glomerulosa? Well, 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 it's the story of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Let's go. Renin is released by your lovely kidney thanks to beta-1 stimulation, which is sympathetic nervous system stimulation. Let's say you are bleeding, for example, after a car accident. Oh, this is dangerous. Fight, flight, sympathetic activation, beta-1 stimulation. Kidney will release renin from the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Renin is released into the bloodstream. It's a hormone. It's a protein that comes from the kidney. Renal renin. Ta-da! Renin converts angiotensinogen, which is a protein that comes from the liver. Why do you call it angio? Because it will act on blood vessel. Just hold your horses. Tensin, because it will cause tension in those vessels. Hold your horses. And ogen, because it will cause genesis to angiotensin. Angiotensinogen causes genesis of angiotensin. This is angiotensin 1. And then, thanks to angiotensin converting enzyme, Angiotensin 1 will become angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two functions. Function number 1, well, the name has the answer. It's called angiotensin. It increases tension in the blood vessels. I'll cause vasoconstriction, which raises your blood pressure because you just lost lots of blood after the car accident. This was function number one. Function number two for angiotensin two is to release aldosterone from the zona glomerulosa. Aldosterone has four main functions. Reabsorb salt, reabsorb water. Secrete potassium, secrete hydrogen, which will increase sodium and water in your blood, but decrease potassium and hydrogen in the blood. Hey, medicosis, if I just had a car accident, why do you want me to reabsorb more salt and water? Because if you reabsorb more salt and water, what's going to happen to you? You will raise your blood pressure to perfuse your organ, lest you should die from severe hypovolemic shock. Because what's the definition of shock, please? Inadequate tissue perfusion. And as you know, patients with hypovolemic shock suffer from hypotension. That's why this aldo is super duper important. Aldosterone reabsorbs obligated water as you know. Antidiuretic hormone works here on the late distal and collecting tubules in the kidney and this is for pure free water but obligated water is being reabsorbed all over the nephron of course including the distal and collecting tubules under the influence of aldosterone. What stimulates antidiuretic hormone release? Hypertonicity 
volume depletion, and some medications. Why hypertonicity? Because hypertonicity means increased osmolality of your plasma. If your plasma is super concentrated, uh, don't you think we should dilute it a little? Yeah, give me some ADH to reabsorb pure water, dilute my plasma, and bring that tonicity down back to normal. Next, extracellular fluid volume depletion increases ADH release. If your volume depleted, don't you think you should reabsorb more water to increase your volume inside your blood vessels? Sure. Conversely, hypotonicity and ACF volume overload cause the exact opposite, which is inhibition of ADH release. Okay, medicosis, but what stimulates aldosterone release? Sympathetic stimulation, this is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, volume depletion or hypotension because if I'm bleeding, if I'm hypovolemic, I better reabsorb salt and water to increase my blood volume and my blood pressure. Hyponatremia, why? Because aldosterone's job is to reabsorb more sodium. And when you have hyponatremia, this signals danger, danger, danger to aldosterone. Hey, aldosterone, we need you. Need me to do what? To reabsorb salt. Conversely, hyperkalemia and acidosis stimulate aldosterone. Why? Because aldosterone's job is to secrete potassium and secrete protons in the urine. If you want to learn more about the adrenal cortex pharmacology, and if you'd like to learn more about insulin, cortisol, thyroxine, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, etc., download my endocrine pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. It comes with videos, cases, notes, and a mind map. I also have a renal physiology course on my website. If you want renal pharmacology, it belongs with my cardiac pharmacology course. Nephrology, fluids, hemodynamics, acid-based stuff is one of the topics that most doctors struggle with. You can do better. Or you can try my brand new surgery high yields course. Get a 30% discount by using promo code SAFE30 in one word. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.